Today, how to clean up pandas data. Now, now why might you want to do that? For example, suppose you send out a survey, right? A survey is something you send to people, they fill it out. It's a way they gather information. Now, it's not guaranteed that they will fill it in with valid information. You know, there will be some data that's, for example, have missing values. They won't answer every question. I mean, if you send a survey of 100 questions out, what is the chance that someone will fill in all 100 questions? Not very high, right? And then what's the chance that if they do, they will put valid values in each, in each question? Not very high in all cases either. So we, you'll see what I'm talking about here. So here I've written this down. <clears throat> so what we're going to do is we're going to generate some random data that's not clean. Um, we want to show how to drop duplicate rows. You know, if you get the same person doing the survey twice, we want to get rid of one of those or we'll have skewed statistical results, right? Okay, rows that have missing values. Now, what do you do about missing values? Do you drop the whole row? Do you get rid of the whole survey? No, because there'll be too many people that... Uh, have missing values because it didn't fill in every every question, right? And this is true with any kind of data. This is true with data that you can gather through sensors in a manufacturing plant or, or you know, data that you buy. For example, if you buy data for analysis or gather it from any kind of source. Okay, then missing values. You know, what can you do about missing values? Well. You can either put in something else that has no logic behind it at all, like a zero, or you can do something that's logical, like like pick the average of the column and, and use that. Okay. Okay. Outliers. You'll see what an outlier is. An outlier is data that is widely different from any other data, so it's going to skew your results. Right now. We will use standard pandas functions, but we'll also show how to write your own custom function. Because, you know, what you do might not, you know, might be specific and um, there might not be an existing function for that. <clears throat> All right, so anyways, here we're gonna make some bad data. Now you don't need to really understand how this, this code works. It's just that it just goes through and we have these columns. You know, it's it's uh, name, education, age, city, so forth, salary, and we I've made these of type numpy int four int eight and strings. So words, these are some of the invalid data elements that I want to put into the data to make it bad. To show you how it works. So we have numpy nan nan means not a number. Python null is, is 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 called none. None and not a number are not the same thing. For example, a is not a number, right? But anyway, so then we just pick some strings to put in here. So this code just loops through and it, it says, you know, for every multiple of five, go put in something invalid. Otherwise, Let's draw from the standard normal distribution to calculate these numbers. And then here I'm I have a, a yes no question. Are you a citizen? Okay, income. Now most people's income you'll see in this data is around one hundred thousand uh, dollars or euros per year. But then we put in a million dollars for some people and. Um, you know, someone might make a million dollars, but in, in this case, we want to show that as an outlier. If it's the employee, he's not going to make a million dollars. He's an executive. They probably get their salary recorded somewhere else. All right, so we've got <clears throat> all kinds of bad data. For example, we have, are you a citizen? Yes or no? Well, we have 
yes, no, and two. We have, what is your salary? Don't, didn't put one, not a number. What is your salary? One million dollars. Okay, that's, that's an outlier. We'll, we'll get rid of that. Okay, we have, uh, for example, the same, the same pattern. We have name, we have some people left their name off. So let's see how much of this we can fix. Okay, so here's one way to show this is this is just how to see if a column's empty. We can say is null. So it returns that as a series. A series, remember, is a data frame with with one column, and the result of that is just true or false. So the name, the second one is is null. Let's go back and look here. Right, it's nan, not a number, not a number. Okay, there's a way to check more than one condition at a time. We're gonna say, um, you know, is uh, the data frame can contain a zero? We'll say exodus changes. Let's say, because I'm gonna look at the whole data frame. Say, is the data frame have any null values or not a number, Th these two conditions. Okay, so it does that for every column. We can see here. Now, here's the point I wanna make. We have to ask the question, is not a number the same as none? We put this, that's not true. If you're working with other programming languages, then you know about null. Python null is basically none, but for pandas, uh, you, you usually use NAN. You convert nulls to NAN as a standard procedure, and then you eliminate NANs later. Okay, anyway, let's take a look at salaries. Just print them off the series. There we go. You remember, if you're not familiar with pandas, uh, this number on the left is the row index. Okay? And then the, the number on the right is the data. Okay, so what can we do here now? We're missing we're missing uh, salaries. Like we have nan. Do we have any zeros? We don't have any zeros. So what would you do? Would you delete the whole survey? Well, not if you you know spend a lot of time sending it out, a lot of expense and so forth. So let's just do what's logical, which is you know let's replace the empty values with the average of the rest of the values. So we say here, what is the mean? You know, what is the average of all um, of all the, the salaries? Well, we can just do this. We can say, look at this series and run the mean function over it. There it is, 184,000. That's pretty high because we've got a couple of people with with a million dollars. So we, we, <laughs> we will fix outliers first or later. We should have done it first. But anyway, so let's do this now. Print out the data frame. You can see now everyone has a salary. We still have people with a 100, with one million dollar salaries. Will someone have 184 thousand dollar salaries? Definitely in the United States. Okay. Now, <clears throat> citizenship. Okay, a citizen should be. You know, are you a citizen? Yes or no? What did people put? Yes, no, and can, to. Okay, so, you know, that whatever software that we use to gather the surveys could have done a better job of, of, of checking for invalid values, but maybe this is sent out on paper, you know? Could be old-fashioned way of doing it. Or they didn't write code to filter that out. So let's filter it out like this. So the apply, the apply function is run across every row in a series or every row in the, in the data frame. Here we'll, we'll, uh, we'll run it into the series. Now we'll use a, an autonomous function, which in pandas is called, in Python is called lambda. So we take, we take the citizen, for every value we'll say, we'll say, okay, X, meaning keep it if it's, if it's a N, Y, or N. So those are good values. Otherwise, this is blanket out. 
Okay. Now, you can't, in this case, replace it by the average. You can't, you can't take a guess whether they're a citizen or not. So we can, the best we can do is get rid of, get rid of numbers. So let's print it out and see what it looks like. Okay, now we have we have valid answers. We some people we do not know because they gave us invalid data. Now outliers. Okay, so <clears throat> we can set a threshold to be, for example, uh, two standard deviations. Let's see what the salaries look like now. Okay, we've got we've got uh, three people with million dollar salaries. Now, unless they're basketball players or data scientists doing Python, it's not very likely. So we will do this. We'll, we will say that's got to be a, a mistake if it's more than two standard deviations away. So in other words, DF salary minus mean. That is, you know, we're, we're going to take the salary column subtract the mean, and then if that is bigger than two standard deviations, then we will gonna do the drop operation. So here we're doing three things, right? We do, you know, first we we calculate, then we, we find it with LOC function, and then we do drop. Drop means drop this row. If this logical condition is true, then we use in place equals true. Why do we do this? If we don't do in place equals true, it will um, it will not update the data frame. It'll make a new data frame. There's something that, that you have to remember. In other words, if we if we didn't have this, we written it like this. And we did not assign this data frame to something new or assign it to itself, then we would have effectively done nothing. You see? So we have to save the result in a new variable, new data frame, or use in place. Now, in place does not work with all pandas functions. So it's important to remember that. That would be a difficult error to, to figure out on your own. Okay, now let's take a look. Okay, does anyone own? Uh, earn a million dollars. No, we have no one earning a, a million dollars. We still have people, we still have people earning 184,000. So let's go through and calculate the mean again, a second time here, fix that. So we'll run this bit of code again. This system, everyone's salary should be Roughly the same. Why do we still have people with? Ah, this is why. Because it's not empty value anymore. Okay. Well, we can fix this now. Let's let's fix this and make it like like we should have it in uh, the real life. We say let's let's change the order of everything. Okay. We'll say let's say get rid of outliers first. And then set the remaining salaries to be the average, the, um, the outliers, and then calculate the mean. Now, if you want to see uh, how this works, so for example, if if the average salary is what? Let's see, let's go back up here. We'll, we'll just say what's the mean. Hundred and fourteen thousand. So, is is that number? You know, is is one hundred thousand minus the mean bigger than two times the standard deviation? We should actually be taking the absolute value here, right? No, but is one million? Yes, see, it's too large. It's more than two standard deviations away. 
And we define the standard deviation to be, well, we calculate the standard deviation like this. Two standard deviations is $312,000. Let's go back and fix this thing here and make it use absolute value. ABS. Why do we need to do this? So that, well, we need all the numbers to be positive, right? To figure out the difference. Okay, working. All right, now, go on down some more here. Okay, so what's the next thing we want to clean up? Okay, we clean up citizens. We got rid of the numbers in the citizens. Now, dropping rows. This is um, just to illustrate how we drop rows. Okay, so we want to say drop drop when there's, when there's uh, okay, how, what is that? Let's see. We, we drop all rows that have NA in any column. They have NA in in any column. So let's run this and see. Didn't update it. Why? Because we didn't assign the data frame to something. Let's assign it to this, to itself. Oops, need to print it now. Print it out. So we drop quite a bit of our data. So I kind of purposely did this. I left this assignment operation off because I didn't want to delete the data that we had. We need some data to be able to clean it up. Run everything again and put it all back. So in other words, this, this drop operation, it ran, but it didn't do anything. Why? Because we don't have the, we didn't put the in place equals true on, or we didn't assign it to itself. Now, here's an example of a, of a custom function. Now, a lambda was a custom function, right? But it was an autonomous function, an inline function. You make a function inline when it's short, and you don't want to have long code. I mean, if it's just two little statements, no reason to write def, all this stuff. Okay, so here we're going to take the city and make it uppercase. Now, see, the point here is that this is a series, see? One column from a data frame is a series. So when we pass this to the upper function, that we're working with a, with a Python primitive. A single value. Now, if we look below at the next example that we're going to run, we're going to see, we'll say DF applied. No, notice we apply it to the entire data frame. So every row is in scope in this function. So we can operate on individual columns. See the difference? Okay. DF apply the whole row. Okay. DF apply one series, one element. So anyway, we run this. There you go. <clears throat> All the cities are uppercase. Okay. Of course, it didn't make none uppercase. Now here, what are we trying to do here? We are trying to take... Okay, we're doing the same thing. We're just going to put the city back as a lowercase value. But we're going we're to run this function against the entire data frame. And then here, okay, we call it whole row. We pass it into this function called whole row, and then we call it row. Then we say, we're going to look at this, and we're going to say, we're, first we're checking to make sure it's a string so we don't get an error. We say if it's a string, then let's make it lowercase. Now we have to return the whole row. If A common mistake is to return just what we updated. If we did that, we would delete the other columns in our data frame, ending up with a series. We don't want to do that. 
Now, eliminating duplicates. Okay, duplicates is um, it's a common problem, right? <clears throat> so, how do you do that? It's very simple. The whole idea is, is like if we take this, if we take this data frame, we make a data frame. We put one, two, three, 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 four times five, six, seven, 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 seven. If you group by and count, group by and count, we get here. We get the count of each element. The duplicates are the ones where the count's bigger than one, right? So we delete everything except for one item. So we delete three rows here and three rows here. Now, <clears throat> another way to do this is we can ask pandas to use one of its existing functions and run it, value counts. That will also count uh, unique values or some by some uh, do, do the same thing, group and count. Now, there is also a Python function called drop duplicates, okay? Uh, there's, there's several ways to do it. We, we, we showed this way and this way so you could understand how to do it yourself, how it works. So this is pretty simple. We say, we say, just drop duplicates. It's, that's all it does. It's that simple. But <clears throat> this drops duplicates for duplicate rows. Now, what is the chance of us having duplicate rows in a 100 question survey? Not much at all. But it does work here since we've only, we changed the data frame. We only have one attribute, one column. Okay, now what are we doing here? We are, we are doing uh, group by and then count. Just to show everything's equal to one. We do value counts, the same thing. Now, I'm going to run make data again because I wanted to go to the top, make my data frame again. Okay, let's see what we got here for age. Why are we counting age? We just want to see how many 20-year-olds we got, how many 21, 22. You know, this could also be used to clean up a, a data frame. If we have too many values all coming, say, say we have too many men related to women, then and we're doing a survey, well then we would we would probably want to maybe do the survey again or look and see if something's wrong with our collection mechanism. You know, we don't want data to skew. We're gonna drop duplicate columns, duplicate rows based on age. We don't have any any other unique value that we can use. I had ID, but I did not make it unique. So we would need something that classifies it as unique so that we can know that the same data has been entered twice. But we would just pick age because we don't have another column. So here, we're going to say, use this function called duplicated. That runs against the whole data frame. So we say subset. We can give it any number of columns. We'll say age. Keep the art options are one of them is first. First means it will mark everything is true except the first. So look, I've sorted this, this uh, data frame by age so that we can see here now. Can we add a column to it? By adding, you know, you put the data frame name, the new column name. So we can see here, for example, we, we got someone at age 20, duplicates false. Someone age 20, duplicates true. The next person is also age 20, duplicate true. So to get rid of duplicates, what do we do? We, we drop everyone who has duplicate equal to true. Logical roundabout way to do it, but it, it does work. So here we go. So well actually we're gonna do it the other way around. We're gonna keep the ones that 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 say duplicate equals false, thereby throwing away the ones that say duplicate equals true. So we did that here and now we sort it by age. You can see here we've got unique values. 20. 21, 24, 23, 24, 25.
Okay, so I hope that was useful for you and uh, check back again.